name's Andrew Griffiths, a uh, small business author, professional presenter and advisor. Well, it, for me it was interesting. I'm not one of those people that started out who wanted to be a writer. I didn't know a lot of people that's their, their dream in life. My route was a little bit different. I had a small business marketing uh, firm basically at the stage and I found a lot of my clients had similar kind of issues. They'd come in and they needed advice and, and they didn't normally have any money. They couldn't really afford a consultant to give them advice to steer them through whatever challenges they were facing. And so over a period of time, I developed a whole pile of fact sheets. So people could ring me and say, hey, Andrew, I'm having trouble marketing my business or I need more clients or I need to make a brochure or I need to do a website, whatever it may be. And I could just fax them back in the days when we used to fax. I could just fax them through the information sheets. And I found that one day I had about 50 of these fact sheets up on the wall, actually, in this kind of display case. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I could write another 50 and then I'd have 100. And if I put them all together in one little space, maybe I could have a book, 101 Ways to Market Your Business. And, uh, and I really liked the idea. I spoke to a few friends in the marketing game and they said it was a ridiculous idea, so don't do it. And, uh, and of course I did it. And I was a little bit lucky too, because I, I think it, right at the time when I had put that together, there was a lack of Australian business writers and particularly in the small business space. So there was, a lot of, there was a lot of American writers and a lot of English writers who had great stuff, but the Australian business market wanted Australians to be telling them how to run a business or to be giving them advice. And so my first book uh, came out with Alan and Unwin and I was still amazed that I actually got a book published and it was really successful. And they said, have you got another one? You want to write about something else? So I literally worked my way through marketing, sales, customer service, advertising, um, general business advice in the 101 series that now is sold in 50 countries around the world and translated into everything from Indian to Chinese, Nigerian, Russian, you know, bizarre kind of, uh, I, it's just bizarre for me, but also kind of shows that small businesses around the world have the same issues and challenges. doesn't matter where they are, they're still struggling on how to market or how to use the online world or whatever it might be. I think, I guess it depends on the business, of course, but I, I think that these days people want information. That to me is, is the real commodity that's out there these days. And often we undervalue our own information and what we know, our expertise. And I think that businesses should be producing as much information as they can, but they shouldn't necessarily be giving it away. I think that we're entering a period where there's opportunities for businesses to actually increase their revenue stream by maybe selling some information as opposed to just giving it away. But what's important right now, I think, is you've got to take out what's in your own mind, your own experience and your own expertise. And I think it's great if you can actually get that out of your head and into an environment where more people can access it, whether it's paid, whether it's free, depends on what you're doing. But um, I think we're living in that age of information. So people are, are looking for it, hunting for it. And if they like what you've got to say, they're more likely to do business with you. So it's a great promotional tool. I think writing really changed my life, a hundred percent, thousand percent in reality. Uh, I, before I, I wrote, I mean, I'm a commercial diver by trade, so that in its own right says it was a pretty major change. I got into marketing through uh, a, a strange set of circumstances that seems to happen in life when you have a change of direction, and uh, and was working for a large Japanese company as their sales manager uh, on a global level. So I was in that kind of corporate world for quite some time, but. But it, my passion was really small business. I love small business. I love helping small business owners. I think what happened with writing my own book, it, it helped me uh, to become more of a household name. It helped me to reach tens, hundreds of thousands of small business owners. And like a lot of the time, I don't think we value our own knowledge. And all of a sudden, when you write a book and you have people want to buy it or people want to publish it for starters, and then people want to take your knowledge on board, you kind of go, wow, maybe I, I do know what I'm talking about. And that's almost as surprising for me as it is for, for, for other people. So then you progress into writing. So then you progress into talking at conferences and offering advice to people, franchise groups, small business groups, whatever it might be, magazines, etc. So for me, it... it I think in many ways define me as, as a small business guy or the small business guy in Australia and, and now I talk at conferences around the world, my books you know, as I said are sold all over the place and I get an opportunity I think to help tens of thousands of business owners every year so, and that to me is the greatest reward I can have so it has had a profound effect on my life is a simple answer to a, to a short question. 
for me, the internet has been a, a great opportunity for me to, I guess, become more of a, a um, more of an accepted name as a small business expert from that point of view. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty hard. Even if you write books, if that's the only environment where people get to know you, they've really got to buy your book. And uh, if they don't buy it, they don't necessarily hear about you. I, I found that the internet's been really helpful for me to build my own brand. Uh, it helps get all of my keynote speaking jobs and things like that, training workshops and things, all come through the internet, which would be really hard, I think, otherwise, to get that kind of uh, work, and on a global level. So I travel around the planet presenting on small business, and I think you just wouldn't get that kind of reach, that kind of video accessibility for people to actually be able to see you online, see if you've got the right kind of fit for their group, for their organisation. I think it's a way for me to disseminate lots and lots of information that I get, my current observations, what's happening in the world of business right here, right now, and, and offer that advice to people to say, hey, if you're struggling and feeling isolated, don't worry, you're not the only person. There's lots of other people feeling isolated. So it's a way for me to reach out and I guess connect to my fan base, my readers, my, um, my followers, I guess, from that point of view. Yeah, and it's such a it's such a good question, and it's it's something that I encounter a lot. There's obviously so many people that are in that transition zone, and often they're a little bit older, I think, too, where they they they've been in business, they've got amazing wealth of expertise, but they just are struggling to embrace that that the new world of online social media things like that, which is a real kind of challenge for them. I talk at teaching old dogs new tricks. And, uh, and I see whenever I'm presenting and there's a room with lots of people with grey hair, I've got my share coming through, but they're the, they're, they are struggling to kind of go from that traditional business model to a more, more modern kind of model of embracing online. So for me, you can't go in there and, and nag them to death and tell them you've got to do this and guilt them into it and, and yell at them and say, well, you've got, to, you've got to tweet, you've got to go on Facebook. It doesn't really mean anything. So you've got to you, go back a step and go, okay, well, you've got to give it some meaning. You've either got to show them that if, if you don't do this kind of stuff, well, you're going to be missing out in the future, but even go one step further and say, well, okay, how, how do you do business now? What, what, how have you built a successful business? Most of the time it's through building relationships, offering great quality products, being a good corporate citizen, whatever it might be. I say, well, okay, what, how do we find the, the online equivalent of all of this? So, okay, being a great corporate citizen, well, the online environment's a perfect way to tell people what you do as a great corporate citizen. So then how do we actually, you know, transition them through on that part? And they, they can then relate to that. Oh, yeah, we like to tell people we're, we do good in the community. Okay, let's do a video, go online and show people what you're doing. All right, what about networking? Okay, well, you normally go to a social function, meet people, slap them on the back and have a cold beer. Well, how can you do that in the online space? Let's look at things like Facebook. Let's look at things like Twitter and, and understand that all it is is an electronic version of backslapping and having a beer in a cocktail Frankfurt, but it's more instantaneous and much, much broader. I find that once you've shown them some examples of those kind of things and show them some success stories of other businesses that have perhaps struggled to embrace the online environment but have and there's been a big payoff, then they tend to go, right, now I get it, and they are wonderful. I, I love nothing better. I've got a client of mine who's 85 years old, manufacturer, and this lady does all this incredible stuff, and she just loves the online environment. It took her 15 years to really get it, I think, in many ways, but now she's a Twitterer or a Facebooker or a, a, any kind of social media, and she's built a great business. And she said she loves it because she spends nothing on advertising and, and, uh, and, and marketing these days because it's basically a free environment for her. So... So yeah, again, a long answer to a, to a good question. <laughs> My main website is uh, www.andrewgriffiths.com.au. Uh, on Twitter, it's AG, capital A, capital G, author. Uh, that's easy to find me, but it's, you can get it all through my website. And I've got a blog, uh, blog there, one blog, a couple of other blogs starting up soon. So just do a Google search and you'll find me. It's the easiest thing in the world. I'll come up number one. Shows my belief in uh, in the online world.